Uh, ahoy, ahoy, everybody. Welcome back. I am so excited. We're about, what, halfway through day four, I think. Uh, at the same point, I do not know what day it is or what time anymore, so it's exciting. Uh, but we have an awesome, awesome speaker, uh, awesome subject. I'm super, super stoked. And this is somebody I'm, like, I'm actually excited to introduce to you. Plus, I know how good this, this talk is going to be. He, he, he cracks me up. So nonetheless, uh, without further ado, I have the franchise king, Joel Lababa, with me. He's the author of Become a Franchise Owner and the Definitive Guide to Franchise Research. That one's always a mouthful. <laughs> so he's written some awesome books. Uh, he's done a Franchise University. He's done all sorts of crazy stuff to really help franchisees and franchise owners and just that market really continue to grow and learn and expand. And what he's going to do today is he's going to talk to us about how creating that memorable personal brand really helps us stand out because, I mean, hands down, he's, he's one of the best. He is the, the franchise king. Like, I'll just let that set in for a second, okay? Uh, so Joel, say hi to everybody. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. It's really cool. Sasha and I actually almost met once. Once. Just know that. Uh, and Sasha's done some work for me on my websites, and she's cool. We have an interesting relationship, but it's, it's positive. It's fun. And uh, the cool thing is, is I don't hold back. She sometimes does, but I'm trying to teach her not to um, be so uh, shy. Anyway, you know, these are really weird times. And having a personal brand is really important. It was kind of important before this happened because so many people are, are starting businesses and creating websites and it's so hard to, to, to stand, to, to get in front of people and to, and to be memorable. Uh, but now with this happening, um, this is a chance for you to kind of practice whatever brand you want to be. Um, and you can take it slow and you can kind of take baby steps with it. But if you're smart, you would do it now and play around with it and make the mistakes and get your nose a little bloody now. So when business takes off again in a few months, hopefully a couple months, you will be able to stand out and be remembered because that's what it's about. So let me tell you a little story about my brand and how the franchise, my daughter does that, the franchise came, uh, came about. When I'm quoted in, in news articles and, and, and web articles, et cetera, I don't know why, but it's always like, Thank you, Joel Abava, the self-proclaimed franchise king. Eh, I'm not the self-proclaimed. I would never call myself a king unless someone else did, yeah. which is what happened. Yeah. I was uh, involved in, I, I was in franchising. I was like a broker and I was uh, attending a huge, huge chamber of commerce, sponsored by the chamber of commerce, by the way, this thing. Um, I, I was uh, attending a huge, huge networking function. It was like their annual annual event. Probably three, 400 people, 50 booths, 100 booths. And the director who knew me saw me walk into this big like convention hall. And he says, well, he, 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 he yells, hey, it's the franchise king. I was like, oh, me? Really? So... So Tom, who was the director of, of the Beachwood Chamber of Commerce here in Cleveland, pretty much the biggest one in the state, um, like called me the franchise king. And I was like, that's kind of weird, I think, but maybe it isn't. So it, it kind of like I forgot about it until that night where I called a friend of mine in Cleveland, Jim Kukrell, and I said, uh, Jim, and he's a big inter internet online marketer, been doing it for a really long time, way longer than I have. He said, dude, the franchise king, man, you got to go with that now. I want you to get a domain. I want you to register it right away and get an attorney and trademark this bad boy. So you can have that little R symbol. I'm telling you, it's really going to be cool. Now, he wanted me to go way further. He Not only did he want me to get a crown, which I said, yeah, I'll get it. He wanted me to wear the thing like all the time. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Um, I talked to another friend of mine. Her name is Carol Roth. She... Uh, She's been a host on some TV shows. She's on CNBC and Fox and stuff. She's a, like a small business expert, but she knows a lot about the stock market. She used to be an investment banker. So I trust her. She knows how to build a business. So I called her and I said, Carol, so I'm going to be the franchise king. She said, oh, that's kind of cool. But I have a question. A friend of mine here suggested that I wear the crown. And I'm uncomfortable. I'm like, I just, I don't think it's, I don't think I can roll with it. And she said, Joel, let me ask you something. If you sat down face-to-face -face with a client, would you wear the crown? They said, no. 
I said, well, then don't do it. So I, so I took that to heart. Plus, I look stupid in a hat or a crown, so I'm not doing it. So I have one, as you can see, but I don't wear it. And I'm, and I'm, I'm glad I went with that decision. Now, maybe if I was a little wilder, like in my old days, olden days, I would have maybe worn the crown everywhere and but it just didn't feel right. I, I wanted it to be, I wanted to have an edge to what I was doing. So I think the franchise king has that edge, but I didn't want to like be goofy and clownish about it. So I didn't think I would be taking it seriously. So, uh, you know, 40 years from now, we'll see if it worked. Anywho, the point is, I didn't think of the name brand, of the personal brand. So, so think about that. Can you come up with one on your own? Or has someone ever said anything to you? Like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Here's the steps I took. Here, here are the steps I took once the brand was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I got, I got it registered with, uh, with uh, the United States of America, the trade, trade office. I bought a domain. I bought the franchiseking.com, the franchiseking.org. Um, I, I had a logo created for me. I'm not an artist. Uh, I, I, I changed the name of my website. Um, I forgot what it was originally, but I, I had a blog going on and I immediately turned that to the franchise King blog, which by the way, was the first blog in franchising to this day. I, I, I can't find any blog that was before mine. And someone in Cleveland convinced me to do it. Cause I was like, I'm, I mean, I went to like, like I don't know, four months of college. I, 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 I don't know how to write. So just do it, just write. So for those of you who are thinking about starting a blog but don't want to because you can't write, BS, just start writing. You'll learn, and there's plenty of sites to go to, copy blogger, there, there's a lot of sites to, to learn how to write. Uh, so I did that and I started writing. So all of a sudden, this blog had content on it and it was really lousy at first. And it was probably, uh, there were probably 200 word blog posts but then I started getting a feel of it. So here's what happened. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this website, but it's called Small Business Trends. It's a massive website. And Anita Campbell put out this uh, a call to whoever wanted to start writing for her. And I knew about her, she kind of knew about me, but I was like, I'm not ready. I mean, that's like, it's so much traffic in and there's just no way. So she emails me, she said, Joel, why don't you like apply? Like, I'm not ready. She said, you're ready and I'll help you. Sometimes that's all you need. So I started writing for small business trends. I became the franchise expert. There's those fingers again in residence. And I wrote for her for like five or six years. Yeah. Uh, I stopped doing it because I felt like I was, even though I like her, I was helping her brand more than mine after a while. So Sasha, does that make sense? Because you've written in some other places. Oh gosh, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're doing it consistently. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still it's still the platform you're on that's going to get a lot right. of that publicity, a lot right. of that credit. I mean, they might right. remember you as an author, but will they remember franchises? No, there's a lot of stuff that they won't. So I mean, it's completely right. natural once you get to a certain point. You're like, ah, I think I'll do that for myself. Cool. Right, right. But it was a really good experience, and I became a better writer. Now. I'm an average at best writer. That's the way I look at it. I mean, my commas aren't right. I mean, sentence structure, but with millions and millions of blogs around, people just want like get to the point kind of, you know, they're not looking at grammar. A lot of people, uh, uh, Doug might be looking at grammar because he's like a brilliant writer, right. but, but me, eh, you know, as long as it makes sense, I do it. So, um, so that led to some other writing gigs and they started blossoming. Um, and then I got a book deal, like crazy, kind of out of nowhere, but I was hoping to get a book deal eventually because I was writing so much in, in a lot of different places. So Wiley Publishing sends me an email. I just read your review of a book and I'm the editor for that book. I really liked it. And I think that Wiley Publishing needs a new franchise book and you're the guy. Wow. So like email my wife, she's like, no way. Like, really? So we got a book deal. I got paid in advance. I mean, not huge, but it was okay. Um, for me at the time, it was perfect. And six months later, uh, it was done. And for someone that can't write, you know, I thought it came out pretty good. And it, uh, here's how I did it. And, and I do suggest if you're going to have a brand, write a book. 
I'm, I'm grateful and lucky that I didn't have to self-publish it because it was a major publisher that did it. I just made a commitment to 500 words a day. That's how I wrote the book, 500 words a day, and I stuck to it. And my daughter, my wife, I mean, I pound the keyboard. So, I mean, it was like, you know, an earthquake all the time when I was typing, and they would laugh about it. But I did it. Uh, so the book came out, and other opportunities started coming aboard, and I started writing in even more places. I don't know if you've ever heard of the, like, the New York Times. I wrote an op-ed for the New York Times website, newyorktimes.com. Uh, because of the book I got on the Huffington Post before the Huffington Post was a content farm that anyone can write at. So that was kind of cool. Uh, entrepreneur.com. I probably have a dozen articles there. Um, and one of the old editors, uh, I followed around and she's been in charge of some other places. So I've been able to write for her too, because of just create a good relationship. So uh, that led to writing for the U.S. Small Business Administration. Do not go to sba.gov today, please. Uh, today is when they released loan information for small businesses. The site I'm, is, I'm sure, crashing. Now, this site gets, I think, over a million hits a month now, maybe more. So don't go to sba.gov. As a matter of fact, uh, they contacted me and said, let's hold off for a while because I've been writing an article for the SBA.gov, one of their blogs, for like going on eight years now. So I had a feeling they were going to let me know, we don't need a monthly blog right now. We have to focus on loans. Yeah. So anyway, it really, really helped with credibility. I don't get paid by the SBA, but the credibility has been fantastic because I've been the exclusive writer on franchising. Yeah. This all became, this all came about because I had a brand and, and I grew it by writing, which it sounds like a strange way to grow a business, but that's how I did it. And it turned into just more and more opportunities. Also turned into networking opportunities, locally, nationally. When I went to like marketing conferences, nationally, people knew who the franchise king was because they, we met on Twitter, uh, which was like, I was one of the first people in franchising on Twitter because I was like, I gotta do this. So I went the crazy route with my brand. I, I didn't know much about SEO, but I knew that I needed like links coming into my site. I registered at so many different websites for two or three years. So to show you how successful it was back then, it, it, you can't really do it now as much, but um, if, if you can, anyone who's, who has access to another, another tab, do a Google search right now of the franchise king. I want you to go to another, to your, your browser and go Google the franchise game. 190 million results come up. Now, sounds great for my ego, right? But once you get to like the fifth or sixth page of results, you're getting stuff like um, uh, Harry King, the, Harry Potter, the franchise king of our generation. Um, uh, Smoothie King, which is a franchise that makes smoothies. So, but here's the point. I come up first. Okay, I come up first. And if you Google my name, Joel Lavava, you'll even see, I mean, there's like 40 or 50,000 pages. All those things that I created six, seven, eight, ten 10 years ago, a lot of them are still there. So I was big on volume at the time. I got to get my website on, on as many directories as possible, as many social platforms. Um, it was already getting known because of, of the writing I was doing. So volume back then paid off. It doesn't pay off as much now because a lot of those directories aren't even around anymore. But that's one way it did it. Um, so what I want to do is I want to tell you how you can do it. And, and you're, you may be asking yourself, well, I don't really have a personal brand. Well, you, you probably do a little bit, but you don't know it. For example, Sasha. Sasha has a personal brand. She might not know it or she's starting to get a feel of it or she knows what she's doing. So let me ask you folks, what is the first thing you think of when you think of Sasha? I don't know what mine is. Purple. I think of purple. And I bet you do too. So it kind of worked. And Sasha, I think her brand is kind of um, fun, a little quirky. It's also like ethics. And I mean, the girl like loses sleep over stuff that is that might be sitting on the website she, she created for you 
because it's not just right or something is wrong in the code. I mean, she'll like lose sleep. So f to me, that's what her brand is. So integrity, ethics, purple, fun, professional, you know, so that's what she's created and whether or not she's done it um, purposely or not, that, that's, that's how come it's how it comes across. So you can do that too. Now, while that other tab of yours is open, I want you to go and Sasha doesn't know about this. And I don't know if Sasha knows this person or not. I want to show you another example of a personal brand. That's not me. Okay. Cause this isn't about me. It's about you and what you can do when this thing breaks and start what you start doing now. I want you to go to Tanya Daka, T A N I A D A K K A dot com. So Tanya, T A N I A Daka, D A K K A dot com. Now, this is a brand. Okay. Now, Tanya and I have, shall we say, differed on her use of profanity on her website. But if you're not, if you don't pull it up, let me just read something to you um, um, that's on her homepage, but I'm not going to swear. Okay. She's a copywriter and, and, and the work that, that, that she does um, uh, isn't for everyone, but on her homepage, copywriter and legend maker, creating copy alongside the disruptors, the dissidents and the deviants who make life bigger, bolder and badass. Okay. So. If you're not starting to get a feel for her brand, now I want you to click to her about page and get ready. Okay, go to her about page. <laughs> Blank them and the box they want you to fit in. There's no one size fits all. There's no formula. There's only your unblank determination to win. That's how you get the house on the corner, the bends in the drive, or the workcations around the world. I'm Tanya Daka, introduce myself. You want success, you gotta earn it, and mediocre isn't going to cut it. Red, black, uh, a picture of her next to her Harley, okay? Her style is not for everyone. Her copy, believe me, her copy is not for everyone. But she's done copy for me, and she, she tones it down, and she doesn't have to use profanity, but if, if, when this is over next time, spend some time, you know, later today or tomorrow or whatever, give plenty of time and go to her site and cruise around and look at um, um, some of her testimonials and check out some of the copy she's created for some of the websites. A lot of women, a lot of solopreneurs. And once you look at one or two sites that she's written copy for, you'll notice her anywhere on the web. Now you'll be like, it's gotta be Tanya. Okay. So I definitely recommend her for a copywriter. And if you um, are creating a personal brand and you need a look, little extra oomph, maybe, maybe her style is for you. But here's the deal. She's created a niche in professional copywriting because there's no one around like her. No one. All right. It's not like she has a high traffic website. She doesn't need one. She doesn't need one. A few clients a month and, and, and she does just fine. And she's also very helpful. She has free Facebook groups where she helps like your copy, like give her an example and she'll help you with it. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So anyway, enough about Tanya. How do you do it for you is the key. Now, if someone didn't call me the franchise king, I would do like a little survey. I would send out a few questions to friends, family, hopefully you have a newsletter, newsletter subscribers, and anyone else on social media and ask them things like, if you were to refer me to someone, how would you describe me to that potential customer that you're referring me to? How would you describe me? Um, here's a cool one. It's a hard one. Describe me in two words. Describe me in one word, okay? Start getting answers. And I think it'll help you start thinking about who you are or who you want to be or who, how people perceive you. The next thing you need to do is come up with colors. What colors represent your brand? And certain colors mean certain things. Blue is very professional. Um, it's also considered not real harsh. Red, like mine is like, ah! But I have to have a strong brand if I'm going to be called the franchise king. I have to. 
So I've red and black. By the way, if you didn't notice my brand color, you'll see red everywhere around the web, all right? I wear this red shirt when I create videos. I have to, all right? Um, but I want to. So make sure that you are consistent through our, when you do your social media profiles, all right? You know, you might have uh, social media accounts set up already, but you might have to change them with your personal brand or create a new one. Use the same colors everywhere. Try to use the same basic pictures everywhere, all right? If you, if you have not, if you're not able to come up with a personal brand on your own, or if you haven't been able to get a personal brand ID or two from people, pay a marketing company. Find someone in marketing and tell them what you're about and, and pay them to help you create a personal brand. They might have done it before. Do it from a referral. Ask someone who knows someone who knows someone. You know, six degrees separation. You're a lot closer than you think to a lot of people that can help you. So decide on the logo. You've got to get a logo created. There are plenty of websites that will do it for you. Get your colors. And if you have not already, buy the domain. Get your personal brand name registered if you can do it. All right. So you get that, that trademark. It's important. It's really important. Plus, no one can take stuff from you. To me, that part is not as important as getting a website and a domain going, all right? And then a blog. But Joel, there are so many blogs around. I don't care, okay? You need to have it. You need to have a platform. You can do it by video or you can write. I do more writing than videos. You have to start writing about your, your niche, your, your topic of expertise, but you have to put your voice in it. You have to. If you read any of my blog posts, you'll know there, there's a little bit of starkiness, a lot of in your face, and a lot of help all in one. But I don't know how to write. If you want to learn how to write to someone, like they're your friend, look up chrisbrogan.com. Chris Brogan taught me just about everything that I know about how to write to you without making it about me most of the time. ChrisBrogan.com. He's a great guy. We met because of Twitter. Um, and he knows me as a friend. He calls me your highness, your royalty, your eminence. I mean, it's hilarious. Uh, but if you want to know how to write one-to-one, -one, that's, that's a guy that can help just by reading his stuff. So logo, start writing. And I start writing a lot. Yeah. You have to get some SEO stuff going too, though. Even if you don't know how to do SEO, there's some basic things you can do. Register in some directories. And whenever you write content, hopefully you'll have two or three pieces of content, link it to one another, all right? Internal linking is really important. Try to get links from outside in. And one of the ways you do that is with your social media profiles. It's not a lot of juice, but it's something. When you start writing for other websites, which you really need to do, make sure you put a link in your bio the link back to your site, to the page on your site that you want. This stuff is really basic. I think Bear is joining us. Hold on. I was wondering when Bear is going to come yeah, barreling I, I in. I knew he would pop in. <laughs> That's okay, though. Um, so those are some basic things, all right? And there's a lot of free SEO courses you can take online. So but learn about it. This is all really important in your brand. Uh, so... What has branding been able to do for me? Well, you've learned a few of the things. Um, turn into a book deal, et cetera. Um, I, I, really do, I really do want you to write a book. I, I think you should. Or at least some kind of downloadable guide that you can sell, something. I think it's really, really important. What else do I have for you? I don't know. Um, Ah, here we go. Come up once you have your website established, fairly established. Once you have your content going, come up with a contest, a contest, and either hire a PR firm or hire a writer and do a press release about the contest. Give away something. That's how to get that brand of yours out. A couple months later, do it again. There's a lot of stuff you can do to create a personal brand. Even if you think, oh, I don't have a brand. I'm not worth it. I don't have it. You have something special about you. I don't care what niche it is. But creating a personal brand can help a lot these days. 
and I'd love to answer questions if you have any. Sasha, I'd love you to, to pitch in your ideas and, and, uh, and you know, let me know what's happening. Absolutely. And guys, don't forget, there is a chat. There's a Q&A. I can see it all. Drop the questions in. Uh, we love to answer them. And, and I, I know Joel would just adore answering your questions. Absolutely. So uh, I, I have to ask, right? Uh, because it's happened to me. I, I know it happens to other people. Uh, when you are creating uh, that personal brand, especially if you're doing it really well, uh, you end up with two pools of people, right? The ones that love you and the ones that really, really don't. Yeah. I mean, if you're making a strong personal right. friend, we know this. <laughs> right. How do you recommend? Because, I mean, that's something that you don't prepare for. You don't really see coming. How, as a, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as, as the franchise king, did you, did you deal uh, with the, hey, kick the ball? I'm, I'm glad you asked because it's something that I, for, uh, I didn't write down and I forgot to mention it. I think that if you're going to have a personal brand, you need to have the courage to be principled enough to stand up for what you believe in. For example, on the bottom of my, uh, on the bottom of my site in one of the widgets, there's a link that says about the Franchise King brand. I just wrote the page like two months ago after reading a book by Jim Cooperl called Unskippable. And in Unskippable, he talks about um, just putting it out there. So I put my politics out there in this page. Um, not like in a jerky way, but pretty much like, I don't like Trump. I think he's a goof. And for me, it's about doing the right thing. And he doesn't know how to do the right thing. It's just not in him. And here's what I like. So I put a bunch of stuff on Twitter that um, is, is, you know, not very positive about Trump, but from, from real like sources, not like conspiracy theory stuff. So anyone who follows like my Twitter feed knows where I stand. Um, if someone doesn't like it, I don't care because I'm, I'm being true to myself. So I think you have to have the courage to do that. Now, some people mix their religion with their business. And this is where it gets weird yeah. to me. I'm just talking about me. It is a 100% always a turnoff. Um, I will unfollow that person. I, I just don't mix it in there. Okay. Politics. I don't think you need to put it in your brand, but I think you do need to, to stand by it. Um, there are people in franchising that do not like me, but not because of my politics as much as because I don't care about calling people in the franchise industry out if they're scumbags. I don't care. If they are offering a, a, a franchise opportunity that is less than stellar and they, they just don't care about people, I'll, I write about it. I don't care. So there's some people in franchising that think I'm a little too in your face and that I'm a little too honest about what goes on in franchise. I don't care. I don't care because I consider myself to be a consumer advocate for franchising. So that's, that's part of my brand. And people know that people know that. So it's a great question. Well, I, I, and the sooner you can get to that point of, I don't care the better, uh, because I mean, the, the bigger you go, <laughs> Uh, I won't lie. I have, I have some haters. I have a, a few high profile haters. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but okay. you, you, you gotta be able to say that's okay, right? I stand by what I stand by. I am who I am. And that's okay. Uh, we've got a question. So let me read that again. Okay, I got it. When do you cross the line from a business brand to a personal brand? Well, if you are a solopreneur like myself, a one person business, easy to do. It's one and the same, really. I mean, I have a corporate name, Franchise Selection Specialist Incorporated, which I did before the franchise came. So if I want, but see, I'm too lazy to write it out. I can do a DBA, the franchise team doing business and forget it. I'm the franchise team. That's my corporate name. You want to write me a check? That's where the check goes. Yeah. Those go to the franchise team. So hopefully it helps, but just be a personal brain. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't overthink this. Don't ever think it. But I started one already, but it's not really personal. Okay, well then keep your business name if people know it, but put your own brand into it. More, more on your about page. That's where to do it. Right, uh, bring it, right? Really, really emphasize all of those things. Uh, I kind of, for me, and you can laugh. I, I'm, I'm totally okay with this, but my, my analogy is kind of like going on, on television, right? 
the amount of makeup you wear to go on television and the amount of makeup I wear ever, uh, very, very drastically different. But it's the same thing, right? When we're, when we're people versus business owners, it's almost like we have to turn up the dial on those accentuating features, right? right? right. That, that's kind of how I look at it. What do you think? Right. right. I, have, um, I have an example. It's a hypothetical of, of standing behind what you, what you say and what you write and what you tweet out and put on Facebook. You, when my book came out, uh, I had an opportunity to be on Fox News. All right. Um, I can't stand Fox. Back then, I was like, eh, I don't really like it, but it's not, you know, it's not as bad as it is now. And it was only on the web. They didn't put it on the TV part, but it still came across as Fox TV. So it was fine. Great exposure. If Fox, if, if someone from Fox News called me on the phone or emailed me and said, I want, I want to talk to you. I want to interview you about what's going on in franchising because of the coronavirus right now. I wouldn't talk to them. If they said, we want you in the studio in New York City, I'd say, pass, I won't do it. Most people will do it. Not me, because I can't stand them. And I just, I, I, think, it's, I think it's fake. It would be fake for me to go on there because it's not what I believe in. I, I, I don't believe they put out stuff that's like real most of the time. So I couldn't do it. And other people would say, oh man, Joel, come on, man, millions and millions. I don't care. I don't care. They're not your people. They're not my people, exactly. Right? Yeah. I, I put stuff out on Facebook before. And people have said, Joel, why, why are you saying that? You know, a lot of people want to buy franchises, you know, might be that person. I don't care. They want to work with you. They, they do. They don't. They don't. I'm going to work with them like I'm going to work with anyone else, professionally, ethically. I'm going to help them. But if they don't want to work with me, they're not going to want to, I don't care. Yep. But you have to be like that. Be picky. You're picky, right? Oh, God. Yeah, There's people getting you won't work for that you, that you used to work for, right? You yep. won't do it. You know better. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. I, I have, I have like, some serious rules in place. <laughs> now right and you have to get picky right both for yourself i mean if you have staff it's also for your staff uh it's for your well-being it's for your image and your brand because uh, actually it's been a theme you don't know who's watching and when they're watching and you don't know how far how long it's going to last or spread so it's it's all interconnected and being able to say this is me unashamedly and i'm okay with that uh makes makes that impression and it and it really helps with the consistency piece imagine that right Right. right? Uh, which I really, really like. Now, I know we're here talking about branding, which is great, but it kind of kind of made me think. So you know, the franchise game, awesome. How, how does franchising and personal branding go together? Um, now for you, I see, I see the obvious here, but I'm thinking about the, oh God, so many franchises. I'm thinking about like the subway owners and the, right? Um, the, do you, do you recommend that personal branding even in those franchise situations? How do you marry the two? Generally, the brand is the brand with something like that. And that's part of what you're paying for. And that's part of the reason you're buying a franchise is because you want that brand name. Um, you could be known as that subway dude in town if you own enough of them. Yeah. That's fine. But mm, I don't know. It's nothing that I would really marry with franchising. If you want to be your own brand, don't buy a franchise, basically. Yeah. You know, you're buying a brand. It's part of what you're doing in most cases. Yep. And if it's not a brand, when you buy it, you hope that it will be someday. Right. No, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I, it, but it got me thinking because I know that um, some of the, I think it's Loblaws companies, there's so many of them now, uh, you know, it's this person's whatever and this person's whatever. And so they're trying to marry those two. Uh, but personally, as a marketer, I don't find that super successful. <laughs> I, have an example, I have an example, though, of a corporate uh, way that a corporate person did this. Um, there's a guy by the name of Scott Monty. A lot of people have heard of him. Nice guy. He used to work for Ford Motor Company, right? Detroit. Like, and he became their, their, their like, um, um, what you call it? Not the influencer, but anyway, he, 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 he would spread the gossip about Ford everywhere. Um, but he has a personal brand because he left Ford. But everyone knows he's Scott Monty. He's ScottMonty.com. I mean, he has a persona, you know? So he was able to do it. Um, Guy Kawasaki worked for Apple for years, right? Guy Kawasaki, his own brand, guykawasaki.com. 
Real good guy, by the way, smart guy, wrote a lot of books. But so he was able to do it. But in franchising, the CEO of the franchise company can be a brand. You know, there's that uh, John, whatever his name was from Papa John's. Um, um, a hated guy, a hated brand, but he was, he was the brand, you know, he was the, the personal brand of the company. So sometimes it doesn't work, you know, and he got blown out, you know, he's not even around anymore. I think he's, uh, has some shares, but he's not like on the board. Oh, they're not using him anymore. Yeah. At all. So they can backfire too. Of course it can. I mean, anything can backfire. Let's just be fair. <laughs> Especially now yeah. when people are extra super hypersensitive. Uh, yeah. Now, when it comes to those personal branding pieces, right, there's there's a lot of people out there. They may just be starting. They may be considering starting. Uh, what, what are kind of the bare minimums, right? Because I know there's people out there who may not have a website yet. They're like, I have my Facebook. I'm, I'm cool. You know, or, or they may, there's pieces that are missing. So if you had to choose those base pieces, what would they be? Website with a blog and start writing. You have to get, you have to get your name out there. You're not going to have a lot of people reading your stuff, but eventually, but eventually you might, but it's a real good exercise to put stuff on paper that you feel strongly about. Um, and, and if you know something about something, I don't care if it's knitting or cats or dogs, just start, just start writing. That's what the guy, that's what George told me. Um, when, when, when I was like, should I start a blog? Should I start, start it, just start writing. It'll be okay. That, that's my, I think that's the most important part. Um, even before a logo, um, or, or the brand colors, just, just start writing. Um, you don't even have to have a website set up. Just put it on word and have those those articles, those posts ready to go. But come on, get a website, really? Get a website. Right. Have Sasha, have someone help. It's not, you just need it. And once you have one, you'll feel so much better. Yeah, and and I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen to social media networks. We never know where any of that stuff's gonna go. Uh, right. Your website is your SEO is in your control. It's yours, 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 right. yours. Right? right, so of course, being somebody who designs, I absolutely agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. because building that foundation, building the SEO foundation takes so much time. Uh, so and, many pages. And the website so needs to be your, your hub. This is, Facebook is not your hub. Twitter's not your hub. Instagram is definitely not your hub. Yep. Those can go away. Your hub is your website and your blog. And the, and, and the spoke coming in are all the social media sites and the links. But your hub is, that is your hub. That's the most important thing because you can control it. Yep, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, plus, I mean, I know what happens when they all go kablooey. Then you call me anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> but no, it's absolutely true. You, you, you need that kind of base foundation. Uh, is there anything when it comes to personal branding that you're like, hey, just don't do that? No. No. Um, you know, if, if, I, if I wasn't going to, if I, if I knew I wasn't going to mention Tanya's website, I would say, yeah, don't be profane. But, but that's, but that's part of her brand. And it works for her. In her mind, she can get away with it. And so far she can get away with it. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's not me. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just not me. But yeah, I would, I would just be careful about that unless that's really part of who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Again, making sure it's, it's very purposeful. Uh, right. Uh, so you, you've been really establishing and, and working on this brand for an extremely long time. So you've seen all sorts of other people come and go. Uh, like you said, you're not shy about calling other people out for their garbage. Uh, right. Is that something that you'd recommend for most people to, to, to be that balls to the wall uh, kind of outward here? I'll call you on your shit kind of personality. Only if you have that personality to begin with. You can't, pre don't, this is not the time to pretend. You know, you have to really be yourself. It's okay to be memorable, but be memorable in your own way. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to try to be memorable like Gary V, right? Um, you know, he's him. I, I'm not that guy. No, I'm not that guy. Um, uh, when I was growing up, uh, the Johnny Carson show was around. I love Johnny Carson. I still watch the, the fantastic, like the best of the best. I kind of wanted to be him when I was a little kid, but I couldn't really be him. But I wanted my own talk show like that. That'd be kind of cool. But you just have to be yourself. Be true to yourself is so, so important. And if you're going to create a personal brand, or if you have one now, be true to yourself. 
So when you go to sleep at night, you can sleep very well because you know you're true to yourself. Don't BS. Don't don't pretend that you're that you're someone that you're not. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Well, not only that, but it's ingenuine. And I think people smell that now. They see it. Yeah. Um, and what if you have an off day? I mean, when I'm having an off day, I can't do anything but me, be me. I'm cranky. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. You don't want to end up slipping out of that personality at the wrong time. You don't want to end up giving confusing messages about your tone or right. who you are. Uh, right. so that's excellent, excellent advice. Now, uh, of course, I want to be conscious of time because I could just babble with you all day. Uh, yeah. But... In your opinion, right? If they if they were gonna go and forget everything but one one sticky little piece of information that you left them with, what what would be that one big thing? Start writing in your own voice, and don't be shy. Just start writing. Start writing. That's really as simple as that. That's how I did it. It all started with me writing, setting a website and a blog and writing. It all blew up from there. Yep. Once I, I, I got brain. Right. And uh, you can you can do it like you can dictate to the video and take there's all sorts of ways that you can write without writing now if it's really, truly a challenge for you. Um, but I agree. Get get writing. Keep writing. Um, now, were both of your books uh, uh, published by a publisher or no. why, why become a franchise owner? Yeah, become a franchise owner was Wiley. That's the one approached me. Yeah. And um, I did this one, the definitive guide to franchise research on my own. Self-published. It's not a hardcover book and just be downloaded. That's really cool. So you've done both. So I yeah, mean, yeah, that's uh, that's crazy stuff right there. That's uh, that's where I'm stuck. It's not the writing; it's the publishing. <laughs> but yeah. but it's a lot easier to self-publish now than it ever was. It really is. It's a lot easier. There's so many platforms you can self-publish on now. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I believe you. I haven't done it yet, but yes, uh, there are yeah. tons and tons of them, and uh, I, I truly believe that even just doing it. It, it's a big step and it, it helps you really figure out who you are, what you're trying to say and right. how you're trying to say it, right? Right, right. All this stuff is time consuming. It's it's not easy work. But once you start doing it, it you'll be glad you did it. You'll be glad because you have to stand out in today's world. There are thousands and thousands of websites and blogs being created every day. And now's the time to practice up, to start writing, making videos, whatever you want to do. Just play around a lot because you have time. Take advantage of that time to do it. One last thing, and this and this goes with my brand. Yeah. Um, I haven't sent a newsletter out until this week for three weeks on purpose. I didn't want to send a newsletter out because I didn't think that people needed to know anything that I had to say. Really. Um, there's too much stuff going on that's a lot bigger. This week, I kept it. I sent something out, but it wasn't really a newsletter. It was like, hey, times are weird. It's a great time to learn. Here's a couple articles. You know, stay fresh. That was it. That was it. I'm not actively pushing anything. I'm not selling. I'm not. Um, uh, I'm tweeting stuff out. I'm, I'm sharing content. But but I don't have any. I don't have people that are calling me now. I really want to work with you. I want to spend money with you because I'm about to buy a franchise. Everything's been kind of put on hold a little bit. I have one gentleman though that knows me and he's bought my books and stuff and he's getting close to buying one and he'll, he'll probably, you know, buy an hour of my time, but I'm not pushing it. I'm, there's no reason to, I wouldn't feel right doing it. Why would I try to sell something now? If people are interested, they'll, they'll contact me. They know where to find me, you know? And, and, but there are people trying to really be aggressive right now. It's just not me, not me. So I be agree. careful, be careful. I mean, you, you know, I agree. I've sent out two. And that's it. And neither one of them were really all that related. One said, hey, we're remote. So if you need help, call us. And uh, the other one was here, a bunch of learning for you. Have fun. <laughs> Keep it simple. That's, that's really it. That's yeah. really all. Because people aren't paying attention. I don't think they are. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, someone uh, in my family in the car business. You know, it's tough. Every business is tough right now. Um, you know, unless you're in the shipping business, that's really one of the only ones that are busy, are busy you know, shipping stuff out. But you know, a day at a time, this will end. Um, you just, just, just show up, just show up. Yeah, show up and just keep doing it. Uh, you, you just never know. Weird things happen. I mean, this was supposed to be a couple of speakers chatting with a few folks. And, <laughs> well, that's not quite what happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you just never know. And, and you won't know unless you do. So I love, I love, I love that. Uh, guys, if you have other questions for Joel, and, and for some reason you couldn't get them in here or you forgot to ask them, 
feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to connect you. However, I encourage you to go and check Jill out. Follow him on Twitter. He's hilarious. At least I think so, but I love your humor. I always have, but I read your blogs and find them amusing. So uh, clearly I'm part of your audience, but guys, check it out, right? I've, I'm pretty sure I've dropped the link in there, and if not, I will. Uh, plus, it is on his speaker page as well. Is there anywhere else we can point them to to find you, Joel? Nah, Twitter. Where I have fun on Twitter. I have a Facebook page, The Franchise King. You'll find me. You'll find me. Just if you have any questions, joel at thefranchiseking.com. Yeah, pretty easy, right? Keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joel. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be here today and to, to offer up all this awesome information. I mean, you are the franchise king. That is the way people know you. And that, that, that gives you a lot of insight, which I, I'm so glad you shared. Thank, a huge thank you. Uh, thank, you for having, thank you for having me and for doing this. This is cool. This, hey, I'm just glad you said yes. Uh, I, yeah. It's been awesome. Tyrant's been awesome. I right? wanted to do it. So yeah. yeah. All right. And Thanks. a huge thank you to our sponsors, the Columbia Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we really appreciate you and everything you're doing to help to help me make this happen. Uh, it's, it's been super fantastic, guys. We have another panelist coming up in some amount of minutes on the hour. I'm just going to say on the hour. Wait. Did, it, did it, the Trump International Hotel sponsor this too? No. <laughs> God, that would have been nice. <laughs> I'm done. That's I had to. I had to just. Um... <laughs> hey, you wouldn't be you without just a little bit. It had to come out. I was wondering. Just, just uh, one, yeah, just one. I'm but done. Uh, definitely come swing by, check it out. I cannot at this exact second remember who's next. I'm really trying. It's been a long day already. Uh, but we've had awesome speakers. If you want to catch this session or other sessions on replay, we will have everything up by Monday. And uh, I'm Sasha Brand of the Brand Covers reach out. Thank you for joining us, Joel. Uh, thank you to our audience, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Bye-bye.